George, fine tuning has had a history of being at, at the center, or at least one of the centers of the science religion discussion yeah. over the years. Uh, because fine tuning, at least superficially, if it, if it really is fine tuning, that design is certainly an option that people have to consider. And then, of course, the people bring in multiverse, which which could be opposed to that or could be consistent with that. It's a, it's a different different subject. So, what I'm interested in is assume that there really is fine tuning to to a significant degree, and I think we all sort of believe that to some to some degree. Uh, how do how do you? With a definite philosophical um, uh, orientation towards theism, but but how do you, as a scientist, look at fine tuning in terms of that, uh, in, t in terms of your overall philosophy? Well, this, firstly, um, it's, it's a philosophical issue. It's not a scientific issue, <laughs> and I think one must be clear about it. the 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 science tells you there is fine tuning. It doesn't tell you how to handle it. Right. Okay. Now. The, the, the philosophical options is just happenstance, it just happened to be that way, or um, inevitability, it had to be that way, or chance, it is high probability it'll be that way, or design or intention, it was meant to be that way. Okay. The multiverse... Let's, let's go through each of them, actually. They're yep. all interesting. Yeah. Well, the first one is just happened to be that so that's way. that's a sort of brute fact. It's a brute fact. And you, nothing it, more to say nothing about it. Nothing more to say. The end of and, story. And nobody likes that. The theologians, the scientists, nobody likes that one. But that is, that is a philosophically, um, fundamentally acceptable position. Okay. The inevitability one has fallen apart because string theory has said there isn't this uh, uh, unique way that physics can happen. I mean, the hope was that there would only be one possible physics. Right. Einstein had that hope. A lot of other okay. people did. That's turned out to be wrong. Well, it's still possible. There's some people say that they're, yeah. they're still looking and you shouldn't give up. Okay. And uh, you know, but, but Supposing it was to turn out to be true, you would then have to say, well, why did that particular unique right. physics that's get a, implemented, that, not some other physics? That's so a very all you've done point. is shifted the problem back one. Well, you might have even made it worse because you have an absolute one way it has to be, and that one way Allow, allows life, life and, and, yeah. and everything that we're talking about. It's a worse fine-tuning problem. Yeah, it's a worse, yeah. That, that's yeah. <laughs> so the third one, the high probability, which is the multiverse one, um, this is, again, it's just a, uh, it doesn't solve it. It just shifts it back one, because you then ask the same stuff about the multiverse. Why does the multiverse allow life to exist? Why does it have constants which are fine-tuned because the multiverse will also be governed by multiverse rules which have got fundamental constants. So all you do is you shift it up one level and you have to ask why does the multiverse allow life to exist? So it's not a yeah, but, 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 <coughs> fundamental well, solution. Well, wouldn't it be fair to say though that it, the multiverse solution would be easier to deal with than the single universe? The multiverse solution is a philosophically um, appealing solution and I'm very happy to say that it's philosophically appealing, but it's not a fundamental solution. Right, you still have a thought, right? Yeah, you have the theistic or design one that things were somehow meant to be that way, um, without any commitment to any specific theology or concept of a creator, or whatever. But the fine tuning is then this is the Occam's razor way of doing it. it there, there was an intention. That's why it's fine tuned, and that it's it, it's. It's not just a brute fact, there was an intention there, and that explains, explains it. Now, what I think is important here is the following question. If you're going to approach this issue we're dealing with philosophy, if you say I'm only going to deal with it on the basis of science and physics astronomy, you are restricting yourself to a particular set of data. I'm only going to take into account data from microscopes, telescopes, um, particle colliders, and so on you are excluding from what you're taking into account a vast amount of other data about the world. Um, war and peace, Trump and Brexit, Dostoevsky and uh, Bach and, 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 and so on, uh, Swan Lake and all the rest of it. If you want to do philosophy, on what grounds are you excluding all of that other data when you are looking at your philosophy of cosmology? And I don't, don't think you have any right to do that. I think if you want a full philosophy of cosmology, you must look at all that other data as well. And I think that has the possibility of swinging the balance of the conclusion fairly conclusively into a conclusion that meaning does exist in the universe. And that meaning exists in the universe because it's reflecting something fundamental about the nature of existence. 
Occam's razor, don't multiply entities more than you need. If you have a multiverse, seems like zillions of entities, but in fact, it's only one entity. It's a multiverse generating mechanism. Maybe it's inflation, maybe it's something else. Whereas what you want to do is you want to bring something else of a totally different character, whether it's God or cosmic consciousness or some other kind of thing that seems more of a violation. Violation of what? <laughs> of Occam's razor. Uh, it's a... Uh... It's it's a different kind of mechanism. It, 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 we're, we're thinking of different mechanisms which would lead to a multiverse. Yes, so that is be, that is a step back in terms of Ock and Razor from just assuming the existence of these huge number of entities. Um, you then have to start trying to think what what kinds of generating mechanisms are more plausible. What kinds of data supports them? And that brings me back to my point that if you want to enter this area, I don't think if you really want to enter it in a philosophically deep way that you can restrict yourself only to physics.